Tam, wait, hold on. Yeah, Tam, you're unmuted. Oh, okay. Howdy. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. I, I'm really like, once I get on here, I get all awkward and stuff. But um, what I wanted to think, what I wanted to say was, uh, do you guys agree with military spending? Like more military spending? Yeah. I believe in um, cutting down on military military spending and um, ending all unnecessary involvement in the regime change wars taking place in the Middle East. I, mean, I think need, I'm the minority here. We need a strong military because every day. Yeah, we do. I, I just believe in cutting down because we're spending like yeah, think, we're spending like four hundred billion like a year. It's I think it's closer to seven hundred billion. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, that's like what was it? if you combine the top out of the top four, the top, the second, third, and fourth, they can't. They aren't even like as much as we're spending it's where i just think it's an unnecessary amount obviously i realize that you need a military to defend your country i just don't think we're at we're not in a point where any american is really being de- directly put in danger so i don't think yeah, we i'm need- against the wars but i'm in favor of the spending yeah that's what kind of stand on it like we need like we we need it like most of the reason that people don't mess with us is one we have these two great natural borders that come in the form of oceans and two because if you try to we'll literally wipe you off the map so yeah at that point it's uh, i wouldn't you'll make your country accept gay marriage (laughs) humiliation (laughs) defeat but literally (laughs) literally like we have but on a real note like you see like north korea is like trying to test like nuclear rockets and then you have like china that has a bunch of nukes and russia like if we at this point if we slow our budget down we no longer are like no one's really gonna fear us anymore and 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 not in a, like, I'm scared that you're going to kill. Like, I'm a fear into trying to not do anything stupid to get their country all to afford. So just basic stuff but, like that. But how are we affording this? Because he cut taxes and then up spending. And we're going into even more debt than we started with. And, yeah. We should so cut are- other things. The cutting taxes actually can in, can increase revenue, and um, Nick Videos was talking about this actually on TikTok. It's called the Laffer Curve. He, I don't know he didn't explain it great in my opinion, but you can the the strategy is number one that if you lower the rate, there will be more compliance and people will be more willing to pay a lower rate and not hide their money overseas or in other ways. Um, but the other the other way is that the less taxes there are in theory, the more investment there is. And the more investment there is, the more taxable income there is. Um, You know, you grow the tax base by growing the economy, grow the economy by freeing up capital for investment and for consumption. So in theory, in theory, it is possible to grow the economy with lower taxes. Obviously we we just have, we're spending too much money on mandatory spending, which is entitlements like Medicare, social security, Medicaid, and we're also spending too much on everything else. So what has to be reformed is entitlements. Then that's the problem is a lot of people say, well, the debt is a problem. What's driving the debt is the entitlements. Discretionary spending is up to us. And um, moreover, there are ways that you can cut waste and you can kind of mess with that. But entitlements, that obligation is going to keep growing every year. You know, the we're going to be paying for more beneficiaries for you know Medicare and Social Security in particular every year, and people are living longer. So unless and until we raise retirement age or reduce uh, benefits or we find another source of tax income, I mean, like it's just not going to work. And that's the problem: is the whole the fiscal and the monetary situation is just completely unsustainable and unworkable. So, but when people try to say, "Oh, well, if we cut military spending," I mean, the deficits are more than we're increasing military spending by. I mean, we would have to like have our military budgets even make a dent in the deficits. So so I agree with you, the spending is out of control and that's a big problem. The debt is a big problem, but um, we're, we have to do top to bottom fiscal reform and start with entitlements before we're serious about that. And- okay, thank you. That was, oh, that was great. I never thought about that. For sure.
Yeah, man. Good, good question. Jesus. I think our whole economic system as a whole is we just need to kind of sort out what we're trying to do and what <laughs> we can deem unnecessary and stop spending and I, yeah, move towards that. Yeah. Um, we 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 got a lot to do with money, and at this point. The only thing, in my opinion, we back up our talking money with is gold. Even though the people said gold standard, we say we have gold. And then obviously we, you know, if you don't accept our currency, we'll roll 300 M, you know, M1 Abrams through your face. So anyway, oh, Jake the Snake. Yes, you have your hand raised to heaven. What's up, my guy? Oh, uh, you. Yeah. Oh, please don't tell me you forgot your question, dog. I honestly did forget. I am sorry. <laughs> Base Zoomer? Gen Alpha, I think. No. Alpha mm-hmm. is after 2010, right? <coughs> Do you have any Wait. idea? Yeah, Gen Alpha, right? Do you have any idea what uh what it was about at all? Like, was it directed at somebody? Was it a policy question? Well, I think he kind of solved it during the military spending thing with ah. when you said, like, well, that's why no one messes with us because we spend so much. I think I was going to try and butt in with that, but now it's kind of a little late, so. Oh, that's good. No, yeah. No, I mean, I obviously agree with you, so. There's one, quote, unquote, I guess you could say influencer, even though your boy is not an influencer whatsoever, but. Yeah, thank you for being. Thank you for being here. And yeah, all right. Good, good to start them out young, man. So true. Conservatism for the for the win. Mick, what do you want? Yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna ask a question. You can unmute me. Yeah, you can mute me again if you want it. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> all right. What What's your question? Uh, I was gonna ask uh, to Nick and Jaden. Um, you know, we've seen with the Groiper Wars, like, coming in and, you know, showing face in the neoconservative areas. How do you think we can do that and, you know, have political influence in, like, actual party politics when, you know, the main conservative parties are run by neocons? Oh, well, <clears throat> cats in my zone, so keep it brief. <laughs> it's, um... That That is a difficult question because it's going to take a long time. I mean, you've seen people try to go in overtly and directly like James Alsop and he just got like torched. So what we're, what I've advised my viewers to do is to uh, basically just infiltrate the party, just lie and uh, play your cards close to your chest. Keep your cards close to your chest. Don't reveal your power level and infiltrate because right now what we're seeing is that a fine distinction is being made between establishment and non-establishment. That was kind of like what Groiper Wars was about, was about forcing the issue. And people had to explicitly take an anti-America first position to be in the establishment and vice versa. You know, all the uh, Groiper sympathizers got fired from Turning Point. So what's happened now is that if you set off any alarm bells or red flags that you're not on board with the system, they will, they will make everyone aware of that. They will exile you. They will blacklist you. I've seen it happen to a lot of my friends, actually, Scott Greer being one. Other people work at Daily Caller. People work in Congress. I've known, I've known a lot of people like this. Um, so at least for now, in the short term, to get in politics, you literally just have to infiltrate. And maybe in 10 years, when the landscape changes and we have a ton of people in there, then we can reveal the power levels and we could change our strategy. But for now, you're right. The parties are controlled by neocons. So any kind of bottom up reform they're going to see coming a mile away if we do it overtly so that's why i just tell people sneak in there slip in there and uh that's how to do it